Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. Um, today's sermon will be um, called The Medicine of a Merry Heart, but I may veer into other territory depending on how time and the Holy Spirit moves. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're doing and I thank you for what you've done. Lord Jesus, uh, there are many things on on my on your agenda today. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you will just take over my body right now, take over the spirit of right now. And Lord, cause me to say something to to shift the perspective and change your life. Lord, let my word speak to be you, but your words be many in today's sermon. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys. Um, um, first of all, I, I want to talk about how important laughter is, especially on those days when, you, when you're feeling kind of low. Um, those of you who know me, I'm a generally happy person, even when things are going on in my life. I'm a, I'm a generally positive and happy person, but, but lately I've been uh, fluctuating in my moods. There's been some uh, personal situations going on, and Sometimes it's hard to keep those spirits up, and sometimes the devil will tell you that um, there's no reason to be happy. Isn't it funny that when you're feeling bad, he will bring all of the all of the things in your, your life that you see, you need to like work on or something to be happy with with and um, he'll trick you into thinking that that's all there is but that's what it is it's a trick because he wants to make you think that there is nothing in your life to be happy about and there's nothing in your life to be to be joyful about but there always is and the lord showed me uh, twice this week, um, how um, how that works. First of all, let me say thank you for all the birthday wishes um, that everyone put on my wall. I wasn't able to put a heart on everyone. I put a heart on as many as I could. But I wasn't able to put a heart besides everyone. But I, I thank you so much for all the birthday wishes. So it, it was, I think it was uh, Tuesday where two things happened uh, to me. Um, one thing I won't sh share here and, what, and one thing I can share. Um, okay, um, so I was calling, you know, when you go to pay online for something now, they have a bear, um, the, the, the website you go to have a third party uh, verification code where you can you get the code and the code calls calls you and and no they ask for a verification code and when you click yes then the computer is supposed to call you and give you they say this is from so and so bank and this is from this is from, uh, here's the verification code for so-and-so amount. 
So I, so I was, um, so when, when they first started doing this, it was fine. I, the computer, the thing would come up and I would click phone call or voice call. And then the computer would call me and that would be it. I would put in the code and off to the races. But a few months ago, um, I put in the code and the computer didn't call. And this was happening for months. So every time that code thing would come up, I couldn't do it because the computer wouldn't call me. So I, I really, here in Toronto, for those of you who don't live in Toronto, which is the city I live in, we have something called Presto, uh, where is you, you can you can pay for for your bus or you you put money on your card and you tap it and then the money goes to pay for your you know transportation if you take public transit which I which I do so this week I have to go uh, I have to go somewhere and I realized that my presto was low so I thought okay I'm going to put more money I have to put more money on my presto uh, so I went to put more money on my presto but and that code thing came up. I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? I, it's not like takeout and I can just say, oh, forget it. Or something that I can just say, oh, I don't need it because I need to take the bus. So I went, like, what do I do? The computer doesn't, doesn't work. So what happened? was I called my bank and I said, look, this is not working. And the lady said, okay, let's check it out. So I gave her my information and she looked on the, I gave her my bank number, I gave her the proper information and she looked and guess what guys, it turned out that it was the wrong number that the the bank had the wrong number that's why it didn't work because the bank um on my file had the uh, had almost the right number but it was one digit off so the lady said let's fix that and i said yeah indeed and and oh my gosh so she fixed it and guess what it works now and um <laughs> and i wasn't gonna tell you this other one but i think i'm gonna tell you this other one in the morning that same day um i got up got dressed and 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 uh, the ladies came to get me up and everything was fine. And then I realized that I didn't have any breakfast. <laughs> so I, I, I called down and somebody was able to make me my breakfast. But the funny part about it was, they said, do you need anything else, Rachel? And I was like, no, no, I got everything. And I looked down to, because for those of you who don't know, I can uh, do my, I can feed myself with uh, handheld stuff, but I need help with uh 
uh, anything with a spoon. So I was like, okay. Um, so I, so I'm just so the the ladies I work uh, that work with me and that have been have been doing my care for years. They're all amazing. Shout out to great attendant care. For those of you who have great attendance there, um, remember to thank them and tell them how great they are. So these ladies are just so great that I didn't even I I didn't even look down. So when they left and I was getting ready to eat my breakfast, I realized that as it was no point I looked around the kitchen nothing so i so i called down and they were able to come up and give me breakfast but it, it was so funny because the the funny thing is that some things sometimes when things are so automatic you and people operate in excellence you you just like kind of expect it but, but between that in the morning and the bank thing in the afternoon, I had a barrel of laughs this week. And knowing that I was going through um, some, some of my own personal stuff and I really needed a, a laugh, God provided it. And he said, I need you to talk about um, the medicine of a merry heart. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, uh, sometimes when we're going through things and we tend to just look at the negative side, we don't realize that on the other side of the negative situation, God is working things out. And, and I said before that the devil would love to trick us and think, oh my gosh, it's all bad. And oh my God, my life is crazy. And all the, it's a trick because the devil wants you to think two things. The devil wants you to think this will not be over, you'll never get over this, and and number two is you're the only one. Lies, lies, all of it, I don't care what you're going through, you are not the only one going through it, you are not the only one suffering through it, you are not the only one going through cancer, you are not the only one whose parent is sick. You are not the only one who lost your job. You're not the only one who 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 just came out of school and you have no idea what you're going to do. And, you know, you are not the only one. And I'm here to tell you that you will get through it. I don't care what it is. You will get through it and you and through him you are strong enough to make it and so most times life can really hit you but if you look for the lessons in your life and really glean what um life and God is trying to teach you, you'll, you'll come out with so much wisdom and you will come out of whatever you're going through. And when you come out, you'll be better, you'll be wiser. And life is a roller coaster. So it will forever go up and down and all around. That's the design of life. And you just have got to be still and know whatever you're going through, he is God. 
and know that you're not alone and you will never be alone. And, you know, um, if you take the time to real, to look around and glean it, you can see laughter and joy in everything. And that's what happened to me. Um, in all the in all the mental chaos of my mind and everything that I've been dealing with, um, I was able to to stop for a minute and let, and see the joy of 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 the ordinary things that people do, like getting ready to eat my breakfast and there's no plate on my tray. <laughs> and and um getting ready to punch the code in and the bank doesn't call me because they have the wrong number. <laughs> oh like and I don't think we stop and take stock of the little things, the little joys in our lives. And I just, I just know that the Lord wants us to have abiding joy in our lives. Like I said in the previous video on YouTube. And another thing I wanted to say um, is Thank you to all the people out there that got my video up to 19, I think it was 22, the last uh, time I, I checked. Got my video from last week uh, from YouTube up to 22. I'm so happy. I'm so surprised. Because usually my videos here end on YouTube, total five each, but to see my video go up to 22, it was stunning for me. So thank you so much for those of you who, who watched it and who were blessed by it. And I will put this video up on YouTube, too, but uh, the reason I didn't use YouTube is because YouTube Live is acting funny. And, but I will put this video up. I will download it from here and put it up on YouTube. And I hope that... Oh, so I just wanted to say thank you for that. And, um, and another thing I was thinking about, too, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about two other things, and I, and I wouldn't normally, uh, switch subjects so drastically, but something else has been on my heart, which I think I should uh, talk about. I've seen video on social media, especially YouTube, uh, putting down leaders in the body of Christ. Uh, expo not only leaders, but Christian musicians and all of that, like exposing false prophets and stuff like that. And I was thinking, how dare we? Who do we think we are exposing and false prophets and all of this stuff? Like, and I was thinking, who do we think we are? We've gotten way out of our place. We think that we can put any video on social media and just said anything we want about anyone. We think that God is happy with that, that we're being his uh, 
personal vigil vigilantes and we're saving people from listening to whatever. Who do we think we are? First of all, you're not in that person's skin. You only see what you think you see. You only know what you think you know. How dare you? God, Jesus never did that. Jesus rebuked people that did that. Like getting on their high horse and saying, this person is going through this, the downfall of this person. You have no idea what that person is going through. You have no clue what that celebrity is going through. You have no idea what that minister is going through. How dare you? How dare you? I think we, we just need to repent. We just need to repent from that nonsense, exposing people. Oh, you shouldn't be listening to this false prophet or uh, the downfall of this person, the exposing of this person. Who are we to expose? That is contra contradictory to the word, word. He says, Paul says, and I think it's uh, Galatians, he said, when somebody's caught in a fall, we don't rejoice in their fall. We restore them. We don't rebuke them. We restore them. I think the, I think the, I think, I think real love needs to start in the church. And you think all those videos that you're putting up exposing people and tearing down people's ministries or and lifting them up first but then tearing them down is going to get you more views it may get you more views but i'm telling you the lord is grieved we're supposed to be you know what paul would do with social media do you know what moses would do if he had youtube we're supposed to be using this stuff as tools to get God out there. And yes, there's so many good content, but I've seen a lot of videos that have just so grieved my heart and they grieve the heart of God. What are we doing, saints? What are we doing just for views and because YouTube will pay us, we tear people down. This is not right. It's not right. It is ridiculous. Just just so you could get like, what a million views on your video. So you want to, want to take that preacher that you're tearing down, that artist that you're tearing down, that person is a person. How could you call yourself a Christian, a believer, and do that? That's not Christian behavior. That's ridiculous. And that kind of Pharisee behavior is not something that Jesus celebrated. It is something that Jesus rebuked. He hated the, th the Pharisees. He hated people like that. Not hated, but he was very disturbed. He said, uh, you, you were like dead men's bones. He, he just didn't like all that stuff. He didn't like people sowing discord. He didn't like the religious behavior. And he's not, and he is not pleased with that, those kind of uh, videos. Who are you to expose anyone and what they believe and what they're going through? If, if the, the, what they're doing is not right, your job is 
is not to go on YouTube and make a video so that you can get money so you can get more views to your channel. Your job is to get down on your knees and pray for the person. Pray for their health. Pray for their strength. Pray that when they're going through stuff that that you could, that they'll have a guide in Jesus Christ. It's not to expose them. And it doesn't matter if they see it or not. But because you know what? God sees it. And, and I'm telling you, he loves you, but he's not happy with you to regret. Oh God, give us love for our, in our hearts. Give us, give us an understanding of who you created us to be. And give us just an empathy for people, God. Oh, give us the spirit of restoration rather than rebuke. And give us a spirit of love. Love again needs to dread the church. And love needs to go past, oh, we give this to this person or whatever. Love needs to be in our videos, in our in our talk, in our walk, and like, Lord Jesus, help us to be better human beings. Help us to do things that please you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. I had to say it because I, I, I didn't wa watch any of those videos, but my spirit was, was grieved when I saw all those videos. It was just insane. My spirit was was real because I had to say I told you to not to show me any of those um, any of those channels again. Because the truth is, tragedy sells. Triumph sells, but not as much. We need to change our mindsets. Lord, I pray that you'll cause us to change our mindsets towards good and not evil. And that we do things that are pleasing to you, Lord, and not and not dis, not disturbing to you. And that we lift up those in leadership or we lift up those musicians or those celebrities and we spend love and joy and just peace to them and we pray for them. We get down and pray for them. Not pray against them, we pray for them. We pray that you will take them through their process and that they will come out and we speak life to them, not death. Because even if they, they don't see the video, even if they don't look at the comments, you do, and you see all. And you love all of us equally. But you don't like what what we're doing with those exposing videos. Calling people that we don't even know false prophets and father and celebrating or making making videos on the downfall of people. And monetizing the gossip is death, says, Lord, help us not to do that. Help us to be you incarnate wherever we go. Help us to remember that on our job, with our friends, at our churches, we are you wherever we go. If you had our skin, how would you act in certain situations? If you had our situation, how would you act? 
help us to go into the go through the process of becoming more like you. Help us to realize that we are all in this journey, whether you're a preacher, whether you're whatever you are, we are all becoming more like you. And my becoming is different than than someone else's becoming. Help us to realize that we're all on a journey. We're not all on the same journey, but we're all on the, a different journey. And you love us all. And we're all becoming more like you in different ways. And only you know how you want us to become more like you. Only you know the process of which we become more like you. And it's not nobody else's job to rebuke anybody anybody else's journey. God teaches how to become more like you. So thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you got something out of this sermon. I didn't mean, actually, I did mean to get so passionate because I have been so tired of seeing that. Celebrating people's downfall and calling people's false prophets. And I got so tired of seeing it that I had to say something. So thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.